Sometimes parts of a painting come out better than other parts, and you can guess which part of this one came out better. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is Subliteral Network. I make art and comics, and thanks for watching. Remember to hit like and subscribe, and to leave your feedback in the comments. Now, I post art daily, five days a week, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and this is a, a video roundup of that work, in case you missed it, with a little more detailed description added. You can read my Una the Cave Bunny comics free at radiocomics.com, and please visit my Patreon page if you'd like to support my work. Uh, all these links are in my description and bio, and please watch till the end so you don't miss anything. I posted this piece of a watercolor painting, uh, some parts of which came out okay, and some parts didn't. Some of the, the proportions are wrong and stuff, and this is actually cut out from uh, a copy of the larger piece, which had a bunch of stuff that came out kind of bad. I think, you know, the trick to being any good at this is to get everything to come out good. And those are the artists that like you love the most. You look at their work and it's always fantastic. But I mean, anybody, everybody makes pieces of work that they, some parts come out good and some parts don't. If you look at like some of the early, uh, like Simon Bisley, he's just a great painter. And you notice his blowout, standout works. But if you look way back to what he was doing, some of the stuff he was doing even before his heavy metal covers and stuff, you can see some of the stuff is better than others, even in the same painting. You get a great figure, but maybe a background that's not quite there. And it's hard to accept, but it's one of those things I think that happens to every artist. But your goal, you know, is really is to reach a point where everything in the piece works well. If you can get to that point, then you've really learned something and you're really creating works that you're satisfied with and that satisfy your audience. Uh, you know, you've reached kind of a master level. Uh, and some people have and some people haven't. There's no way in the world I can say I have. Hence, that, that's why I cut everything else out of this picture, because it's all crap. I had to draw a bunch of like super scientist mutant eggheads uh, for a comic store that I was working on. And at first, I kind of didn't really want to, but I'm, but I'm sketching these guys and I'm finding out that they're really kind of cool and interesting. Uh, the, I guess they come under the weird mutant monster category type dudes. Uh, and there's a, once you sit down, you know, and concentrate on them, you find their little personalities are coming out. Uh, and these guys all died in the comic strip, but I'm thinking of doing a retcon and bringing them back. Like maybe they all make clones of themselves in case uh, they all happen to die like they did and they come back. I like them. I like their little quirky personalities, you know, their vast intelligence uh, and their general weirdness. This is part of a pinup I did for Furlough, which was uh, a comic then being published by Radio Comics, which is Furlough is now published by AP Comics. Uh, but when I did it then, it was just a, you know, a black and white piece, but uh, I've since taken it and uh, applied tone to it. And when I did that, the black and white tone, I then resubmitted it to the fanzine uh, Rauer Brazel. Occasionally, not too often, if I resubmit a piece of art that was published elsewhere, I try to add uh, a little something to it, you know. So in this case, when uh, it went to furlough, or, or I'm sorry, when it went to Rauer Brazel, I had added the tones, uh, which, you know, to my mind made it at least a somewhat new piece of art with kind of new information in it. Uh, and I still just really like the way that uh, Cheetah Girl came out. Or is she a leopard girl? Yeah, she's swimming from a vine. She goes up in trees. Cheetahs don't go in trees, so she must be a leopard girl. Most people who draw have stuff just laying around, uh, at least in part, just unfinished stuff that they never finished. So I sketched this up on my uh, on my iPad and just was fooling around with it and sketching it and threw some color on it, and then I just put it away. Uh, so I found it again later, and I said, I, it's kind of interesting looking. I guess uh, maybe I'll just post it. When I first started drawing with Sharpies, uh, I was just having so much fun and so impressed with results, the kind of results I could get, that I just decided I'm going to do an entire comic just with Sharpies. This is the cover of that comic. It's called uh, Dory Capshaw and the School for Wicked Girls. And it's kind of a, like everybody's doing now, it's kind of a Lovecraftian horror story. But it's mine and I like it. And uh, this uh, this cover uh, I did, uh, of course, all in Sharpies, a uh, little Photoshop work, 
and I colored this one up in uh, Sketchbook Pro. It's a pretty tame, straightforward adventure strip, uh, but you know, there's a lot of stuff going on that I guess people, well, for instance, she's got that cigarette hanging out of her mouth. And if you read uh, any Marvel comics, they haven't allowed Wolverine to smoke cigars for something like 20 years now, uh, because somehow it was gonna get little kids to start smoking cigars, I guess. Um, plus I had, I you know didn't really mind too much if I was kind of blowing the skirts around in the wind, uh, kind of like you see here. And the funny thing is you, you do a work and a couple of years later, uh, people start bitching and moaning about this and that and then you look back at your old work and you say Has done kind of some of that stuff, but I don't care. Uh, it was just a raw little comic that I did uh, It hasn't got anything that's not that's gonna really break the comics code or anything uh, There's not even any blood, uh, but uh, I still really enjoy this comic a lot uh, cigarettes, you know short skirts and all